As promised in my last video, today I'm going to talk about dynamic polymorphism. We will first indulge in inheritance with some real world examples and then extend it to understand dynamic polymorphism. Welcome to my channel. I know I have discussed inheritance with the other hoops concepts in my previous video for which you can find the link in the description. In case you have missed my videos, please don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to get the latest updates. We will be understanding inheritance today in terms of methods, references, base classes and child classes. A quick recap of inheritance. When a child class or a derived class inherits some or all properties of its base class or parent class. Now I'm going to rephrase this a little bit to put my point into perspective. When the common code is pushed into the base class and the specific classes have only the unique code while still inheriting the base class properties and methods. I will show you this with an example. We had a vehicle class from the previous videos wherein we had the gears, the wheels and the brakes as the common properties and we had certain methods like move, stop, calculate distance and carry load. Now you see that the move and stop behaviors will be the same for a car, for a bicycle and for a truck. But if you remember from my previous video, Calculate distance had a different implementation in the truck class while it had the same implementation in the car and the bicycle class. So I will write the calculate distance method in my truck class having its own implementation of speed into time instead of rotations per minute and time. And also the carry load method will have its own implementation for each of these classes be it car, bicycle or truck. So then the carry load method will also be called from each of these classes while still being present in the vehicle class. I'm now going to create an object of my truck class to call the methods. the T1 object, I am going to call the carry load method, the move method and the calculate distance method. The calculate distance and the carry load methods are both present in the truck class while the move method is present in the vehicle class. But I have already told you that in inheritors the child class already inherits all the properties and methods of the base class. So move is also present in the method in the class truck. But how is it called? And that is what is important. The carry load and the calculate distance methods are called from the truck class because when the method is looked for, it is first looked for in the most specific class. And same implementation is called if it is found there. So since calculate distance and carry load are both found in the truck class, the implementation will be called from the truck class. But the move method is not present in the truck class. So it will be looked for in its base class, which is the vehicle class. And the implementation is here in the base class. So the implementation of the move method will be called from the base or the vehicle class. You might be wondering exactly how the truck class is able to inherit the move and stop functions of the vehicle class. In Java, we use the extends keyword. I'm going to rewrite the class truck definition to show you how exactly the extends keyword is used. As 
you can see, our child class, that is the truck class, is able to extend all the properties and behaviors of the base class, that is the vehicle class. In Java, we are using the extends keyword. This could change to any other keyword or symbol in different languages. For example, in C sharp, we use the dot operator. Hence, I can conclude that inheritance provides us the functionality of extending the functionalities from the base class into the child class. So calculate distance can have its own implementation and carry route can have its own implementation in the truck class while still having their implementations in the vehicle class. Also, if I want to change the functionality of my move method, I can simply do it in my vehicle class and it will magically appear in all my child classes. Assuming that I have set the base, I will be using it to build over the concepts of dynamic polymorphism. Please stay with me till the end of this video to understand dynamic polymorphism thoroughly and become an expert. Initially, when I had created the truck class object, you will notice that I had created it using the same reference and the same object type, which means that I had created the truck reference type and the object also of the truck class. In dynamic polymorphism, the reference and the object type are different. It is the process in which the call to the overridden method is resolved at runtime. I will be discussing what overriding methods is in a minute, but before that, first we'll understand how the object and references are different. I'll be creating a vehicle class reference and then the object type of my child class. So you see my references of my base class, but the actual object is created out of my child class. And I can do this with all of my classes. So any class that extends a reference type can be used to create the object of that reference type. And what this means is, I can simply do this or this. So you see, since car, bicycle and truck all are extending my vehicle class, I can easily create the object type of any of my child classes while still having the reference of my base class. So tomorrow, if I introduce a new scooter as my child class for my vehicle, I can new it up. using the same concept of having the object of my scooter class and the reference of my vehicle class. When I was discussing inheritance, I had shown you how the class truck was extending the vehicle class. As you can see, the category distance method is present in both the truck class and the vehicle class, which means it is present in both my child class and my parent class but with different implementations and this is what overriding is. Overridden methods are those methods which have the same name but are present in the parent class and in the child class with different implementations. When I will create the reference of my base class but the object of my child class, which calculate distance method will be called? This is what we need to understand. Now, when I will call t1 dot calculate distance, the compiler will check whether the calculate distance is present in my reference class because we are using the reference type to call the calculate distance method. And yes, the calculate distance is present in my vehicle class. But when the object is created, it is actually created out of the truck class. So the calculate distance will actually be called 
from my truck class and not my vehicle class. For polymorphism to work, there are two conditions that need to be fulfilled. First, the method signature in both the classes needs to be same. The compiler looks at the reference type to call the method, which means it checks whether the method is present in the reference type. Here, the call distance method is present in the vehicle class. But during runtime, the actual object class is checked. And here, the truck class will be checked for the call distance method. Now, if there is a difference in the arguments, the call will not happen and hence an exception will occur. Second condition is that the methods cannot be less accessible. I will be discussing access specifiers in my later videos. For now, we will understand that public methods are methods that can be accessed from anywhere, any code. Private methods are methods that can be accessed only within the same class. Now imagine that in your vehicle class, you have the call distance method as public, but in your truck class, you have defined the call distance method as private. The, the call distance method will not be accessible to the T1 object outside this class and the call will not happen again and hence an exception will happen. In static polymorphism, the method's name was same, but there was a difference in the signatures. This helped the compiler to bind the call to the code. In dynamic polymorphism, the methods have the same name and the same signature. So how does the resolution happen? It happens at runtime when the object is instantiated. The object instantiation decides which method will be called. And since the object instantiation or creation is happening at the runtime, dynamic polymorphism is also known as runtime polymorphism. You can conclude now that dynamic polymorphism provides highly efficient and clean code. And any programmer can extend the code without having prior knowledge of the existing code. In my next video, I'll be discussing the most commonly asked interview questions on OOPS concepts. Please do subscribe and click on the bell icon to get the updates of those videos. In case you have any questions or clarifications for the concepts discussed in this video, please put them in the comment box. Thanks for watching.